My heartfelt thanks to the judges of the AAUT Career Achievement Award and also to you, Taz, for nominating me appropriately because I'm an alumnus of this university. After graduating in 57 with honours in psychology, I spent the rest of my professional life outside Tasmania, returning to retire in Hobart in 2001. My last tenured appointment was at the University of Hong Kong, where I met my now wife, Catherine, and where also constructive alignment was born. I'd long been impressed with Thomas Schull's 1986 statement about the application of psychology to education. He said, if students are to learn desired outcomes in a reasonably effective manner, then the teacher's fundamental task is to get students to engage in learning activities that are likely to result in achieving those outcomes. Well, that seems rather obvious, but did we teach in that sort of manner? No, we did not. Not then. Much of my professional life has been teaching psychology to teacher education students, which I did, like most others I think, by telling them what various psychologists had said about education and in their assignments they would tell me how they thought it might apply. Well, it really did. They saw psychology, uh, well most students saw psychology as irrelevant to their actual, what they did in teaching. However, in my last year before retiring, it all came together rather late in the day and I was able to put Shul to work. My 1994-5 class at, at Hong Kong U were 83 teachers doing a part-time B.Ed. Surely the aim of teaching psychology to them was in order to get them to teach better. Well, did it? That was the question. For the assessment of that class, then, I asked them to put any evidence they could collect during their teaching during the day into a portfolio um, so that I could then judge if, their, if psychology had been affecting their teaching. I designed rubrics for assessing that portfolio uh, using the solo taxonomy. This was quite new to them, and there was pandemonium at first, but once they got the hang of it, they were delighted. And uh, in fact, I got the best teacher ratings I'd ever had. Psychology was relevant at last. So this was constructive alignment. The intended outcome was improving teaching. Their learning came out of reflecting through a psychological lens on the way they had been teaching and how it might be improved. The assessment was how well they had indeed improved their teaching. This was constructive because the students were constructing their learning and the, the alignment came from making sure that the assessment and the teaching act, learning activities um, addressed the intended learning outcomes. Well, big question, could this approach apply to teaching virtually any subject? Well, I argued that it did in Teaching for Quality Learning at, at University, which first came out in 1999. Out of that, I got numerous requests to run workshops, but I was no staff developer, but Catherine Tang was. So between us, we ran workshops in Hong Kong, UK, China, Australia, the Philippines, and Malaysia. In so doing, we had learned a lot about how to implement constructive alignment, and we incorporated that in the third edition of Teaching for Quality Learning in 2007, with Catherine, this time, as a co-author. The fourth edition, uh, uh, in 2011, uh, incorporated examples of constructively aligned classes in different subjects. A year ago, the publishers wanted a fifth edition, but a lot had happened since 2011, especially in ed tech, and we are of the generation that 
is rather baffled by EdTech. So we co-opted a third co-author, Gregor Kennedy of Melbourne University, and that edition will appear later this year. So once again, I'm very grateful to you, Taz, for having nominated me and for the judges of the award to consider my work worthy of the award. A wonderful recognition to a long career. Thank you all again.